Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Ham and Soaps. My name is Darlene. I am the owner and creator of Body Ham and Soaps, and the whole goal of this channel is to help other creators create. So today's video is going to be on making my ancient oat hydrating bath salts. Now bath salts is one of those things where I get a lot of questions. Bath salts, you know, they seem simple. You throw a bunch of salts together, um, but you start adding your fragrances and your oils and and different things to combine in here to make them more luxurious and we get clumping and we get you know oily residue especially if you're putting botanicals and things like in that in there um, that oil makes them change color all those types of things now I do have a previous video on using um, of how I would do bath salts that have the botanicals in it and keep those botanicals looking nice and fresh and they don't get all discolored and stuff. So if you're interested in bath salts with botanicals in it, go back and watch that video. This one has no botanicals in it. It does have colloidal oatmeal in it um, and some clays and things like that. But this is how I make my hydrating bath salts, okay? So it's a pretty simple, straightforward thing. There will be no oven time or anything like that. We do have some drying time involved. Get my gloves on, okay? Everything has been sanitized and, and cleaned up. So basically, you guys, we're going to add different salts that bring different properties. So Epsom salts, um, it's really good for relaxation and minerals and stuff like that it helps with sore muscles but you guys can do the research on the salts that you would like to add the types of salt is completely up to you in whatever formula you create but i do have epsom salt i have dead sea salt i have himalayan salt um, i have pure ocean salt and then i have my dendritic salt so one thing that I like to do to add in character and and depth into the bath salts instead of just having one type of one size of salts is you'll notice I have different coarse of salt. So I have some coarse salt, I have some medium salt, I have um, my finer salts and that just adds depth and character to the product but it's completely up to you which salts that you use. Um, for this recipe, and I mean for different recipes, I will use different salts. It depends on what I'm looking to create. So do your research and know what salts you want to bring to your bath salts because that's how you're going to market it and you need it to be effective in whatever marketing you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna move you guys closer while we go through this. Okay, so the very, I've just got my little bowl here. I've got everything weighed out like I normally do so that you guys uh, don't have to watch me weigh things, okay? Now there is a certain order that I will put this in, all right, um, so that I have all of my oils and my fragrances and everything that will have something to soak into and hold until they hit water. If I was to just put all of my oils and my fragrance oils and stuff or essential oils in here, I'm going to end up with greasy salts. So the very first thing, you guys, uh, now you have a couple options. I have dendraic salt. Okay. And dendraic salt is a very fine salt. It's got multiple different edges. If you were to look, maybe I'll put a picture up on the screen here of what the sides of dendraic salt looks like but it has the ability to hold a lot of oils and it really does help um, with keeping the bath salts from clumping and things like that. So this is something I always add to my salt. Another thing that I do, and because I'm going to be putting cocoa butter and stuff, this is a moisturizing bath salt, I'm going to add uh, Nutrisorb. Now it's a very fine, very light powder, but it holds a lot of the oils and stuff and really does help and because I am putting you know enough oils in here for it to be hydrating and stuff I want to add both of these in this recipe okay so the very first thing I'm going to do is melt down my cocoa butter so for my cocoa butter I have 10.5 grams okay I'm making a 2100 gram batch so that I have 10.5 grams and I've just put those into the microwave to melt down. 
okay? So my Nutrisorb, I have 5.25 grams of the Nutrisorb, and this is a very light, light powder, you guys. But it's going to hold a lot of my oils and prevent my bath salts from getting super greasy looking or anything like that. Okay, so I have my Nutrisorb in there, and the very first thing I wanna do is get my butters, oils, and fragrance into this, okay? I have 10.5 grams of the sweet almond oil, which I will put in here. I'm just gonna make sure I get all of that out. So I'm gonna put all my oils in here. So 10.5 grams of the sweet almond oil. Okay, and then I have my fragrance oil. Now, for my fragrance oil, you guys, I'm using oats and honey, okay, that I purchased uh, from Voyager Soaps. It's a very nice, light, oaty scent. I really like it in a lot of my bath products. Um, I'm going to use 21 grams of the oats and honey. cocoa butter should be just about melted then 10.5 grams of the cocoa butter this adds lots of hydration to this I've just melted it down now you're gonna see this is quite a bit of oil typically not what you see but this is a hydrating bath salt so when I stir this in usually this is really flaky um, but this is very much a liquid Okay, so the Nutrisorb is holding on to that, but this is why I use both, because I don't want to use Nutrisorb, you know, I don't want to use large amounts of it. It is just a modified tapioca starch, but you can see I've got it quite liquidy in there. Okay, so I'm going to add in my dendritic salt, and I have 105 grams of the dendritic salt. And this helps hold that oil content that I've put in there. So I'm going to mix this in really well and you will see it will just soak up all of that oil. Where most salts, you'll just have salts floating in oil. This is very much now a powder as you can see. Okay, let me actually lift that up so that you guys can see. So it has become a powder, that dendritic salt has helped pick up all of those oils so I don't have an oily bath salt. So if you're using lots of oils, I would use both of these because that holds all your fragrances and your oils and when it hits the water, it disperses into the water and that's how we get our hydration and our fragrances and everything else. So that is why I use both. All right, now we can go ahead and we can add in um, our salts. Now I like to add in my salts before my colloidal oatmeal or anything like that because I don't want to have that clumping. So I have 966 grams of Epsom salts and we Epsom salts are a very well-known salt. I need to just get in here and mix this super well so that it all breaks up all these clumps. And salt really helps us do that before we add all those clays and things like that um, so that we don't have a whole ton of clumping clays and stuff like that. And I'm just going to get in here with my hands and make sure this is all mixed in really well. You could do this in a stand mixer if you wanted to. Okay, so now, as you can see, I don't have clumps or anything in there. Okay, now we're going to add in our dead sea salt, which I use coarse, so as you can see, it's larger chunks, and that's what's gonna add in all the texture and just bring some character to this product. Okay, so I have 231 grams dead sea salt. 
Okay, I have 189 of the medium Himalayan salt. So once again, another color, another texture in there. Okay, and then I do have also my pure ocean salt, 147 grams, and this is medium. So I have multiple different textures of salt in here. Okay, so I have my Epsom salts, my Dead Sea salt, my Himalayan salt, my pure ocean salt, my dendraic salt, my Nutrisorb, and then I have all of my oils, okay, and my fragrance in here. So I'm going to mix this really well. and I'll bring this a little closer so you guys can see so we have all that different things it's very light flowing it doesn't feel heavy and greasy or anything like that it's very nice all right and then we have to add in of the rest of our powder so I have my colloidal oatmeal which I am adding in 52.5 grams of the colloidal oatmeal I am adding in my baking soda Okay, which helps to soften the skin um, and that's why I'm putting this in here so I have 189 grams of baking soda okay I have candle and clay and I'm putting in 21 grams of the candle and clay and I love clays in my products you guys all are aware of that if you've been watching my videos I find that it makes the skin feel so smooth and so soft that I use it in a lot of my products but I have 21 grams of the kind of clay. Okay. And then that is going to be our powders. Oh, just wait, one more. I have my SLSA. So this gives it a little bit of foaming properties, helps disperse um, the fragrances and oils through the tub without getting a grease slick, that type of thing. I do use the coarse SLSA and I buy that from Soper Moore out of Calgary, but you could use the finer one. I really like using the coarse SLSA. It's just a little bit less of a airborne powder. And I'm also going to put in some citric acid that helps foam and create this little frothiness when we're dispersing this into the tub. So I have 126 grams of citric acid. And then you guys, you just wanna get in here and mix this really well. Like I said, if you had a stand mixer, could absolutely use that. Um, I just didn't bring mine out for this. I love the smell of the oats and honey. It's a very light smell, relaxing. It doesn't uh, overpower while you're sitting trying to relax in a tub. I can find some stuff just gets too overpowering sometimes. So now you can see this kind of has that oat look to it so it kind of matches the description and the name with the kind of clay and everything else in it and it's just a really nice mixture okay now you could put polysorbate 80 in here because of the oils and stuff but I find with the SLSA and the baking soda and citric acid I do not need to use polysorbate 80 okay and then you guys, you can see how if you squeeze it, it starts to clump together some. So we do need to let this sit. So what I do, okay, so what I do is I just get a clean tray. Now I am not baking this like you've seen me do in other videos. I don't need to um, because even if there is a little oil residue, I'm not putting botanicals in this, so it's not going to make it all Okay, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put this out. I'm going to put it in my drying space with my dehumidifier running. Now, honestly, it's not even really about dehumidifying. This is more about just letting the oils absorb in and things like that. 
But I leave this sit for a number of hours until I'm happy with it. I can squeeze it together. I mean, and it's not sticking. This is still clumping a little bit, but just leave it out. And you could speed this up by putting it in the oven. I find that it, you know, kind of activates a little bit too much for me, so I don't do that, but go ahead and try that. And I let this dry for a little bit, and I'll bring you back, and I'll show you how I package this. Guys, this is about 12 hours later. You can see this is nice and light and fluffy now. You know, it's a little heavier than your basic salts, but that's because we use so much butters in it, and like the cocoa butter and oils and stuff. And this is a beautiful bath salt. Okay, it's one of my favorite to use. All right. So now we will package this, and how I package it, you guys, is in small little bags like so. I get these off of Amazon. I'll link it in the description box below. I get them in this size, and in this size, they just come flat like this, and then you pop them open. They do have the little stand on the bottom. They work perfect. This is going into my gift boxes that I'm working on getting done uh, for a wholesale order, so... Um, just small little packages like this for in there, but you can do it in the bigger packages. You could do this in jars, you could do this in a, in a tin, whatever your branding um, requires you to use. But this is how I package them. And I'll just give you a quick demonstration of what these look like in the bathtub. So they're not like a regular bath salt you just throw in and you have no foaming or, or anything like that. These react because of that citric acid we put in there. You can see that it's bubbling and it creates foam. And if you have running water, of course, you're going to have more foam in there. But it bubbles and creates quite this nice lather that's very softening on the skin, right? And of course, you're going to have your bigger chunks of salt like that that are going to dissolve into the water and add minerals. But yeah, it's a very nice, skin-loving, and it smells amazing. And you could do this with any scent you want. You could, you could change this up with any salts or anything like that you want. Um, but it's a very nice bath salt. It's more of a luxury bath salt. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, if you have any questions, please ask them below. Some of the things that I used in this video, I will link them below, and of course, um, the recipe will be posted onto my Patreon site. All right, hope you guys have a great day.